This week, the HPT crowns a champion from beautiful Black Hawk, Colorado, just outside of the Mile High City of Denver. The home of our million dollar prize pool once again delivered an avalanche of cash worth $1,048,000. And with the final few remaining, 230,000 of that is waiting for the last player standing. But it won't be easy. The talented few that are left have already navigated through a field of hundreds. And now the HPT Championship in life-changing money is on the line. This is the HPT. Sit right down, put on your poker face, you with the big dogs now. Better bring your best game, talk trash all you want. To me it's all the same, you won't leave with much when you come in second place. I'm the one with the stack showing seven to the jack going cry to your mama cause I'm sending you back I'll be the last man standing with the money in my hand I'll be the last man standing with the money in my hand Last man standing with the money in my hand I'll be the last man standing with the money in my hand Hello and welcome to the exciting finale of our final table here at the Golden Gates Casino and Poker Parlor in Black Hawk, Colorado. I'm Fred Bevel, the brains of the operation to my left is poker professional Maria Ho, and Maria, we have an instant classic on our hands. 713 players started this final table, building a prize pool of over $1.1 million. The elite ninth in this dynamic field began the final leg to the championship and the top prize of over $230,000. Now the final four are so close to the championship, they can taste it. All of them are aggressive and have a lot of gamble in them, so I'm expecting a lot of fireworks as we play down to a champion. Maria, these guys are giving us a fun show, but now we're in a zone few amateurs have a lot of experience with, shorthanded final table play. What do these players need to do to close out this championship? Well, you know, I'm always a huge advocate for when you're playing shorthanded to really step up the aggression. And with a huge chip leader in Colin York that they're going to have to catch up to, they will have to do just that. Well, all right. Well, let's meet some of the players at this final table. My name is Doug Milner. I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah, and I am a retired. J.R. Richards is my name. I'm a real estate broker here in Denver. My name is Colin York. I'm a professional poker player. I live in Las Vegas, Nevada. My name is Ryan White. Um, I live in Leewood, Kansas, which is a suburb of Kansas City, and I work for Sprint as a corporate development manager. My strategy coming into this final table is basically to continue doing what I've done the last two days. Take my time on every hand, make good decisions on every hand, and then the outcome will hopefully be positive. I was quite fortunate yesterday on the tables, and so I try to remind myself that that's not always going to be the case. Well, that's a lot of money. That's a life-changing money. This is my first final table any, anywhere. Um, it uh, makes me a little nervous, but I'm definitely going to enjoy it and make an exciting final table for everyone. HBT, you know, you guys come here every year, a couple times a year. And it's, a, it's a lot of work. We appreciate you guys coming here. My thoughts on HPT and the structure are very positive. I started following HPT about two years ago, played my first event last year. This is my fourth event. I really enjoy it, especially for someone like me who works as a professional and then on the weekends can take one day off and go to a tournament that has this kind of a payday. I would suggest it to anybody who enjoys poker, is not necessarily a professional, but wants to play in bigger tournaments. What can I take from real estate? Um... Enjoying the game just like my job. Um, it comes and goes, you don't get every deal. And uh, just loving life. All good players, all nice gentlemen. Let's check out the money on the line and the updated chip counts, then get right to the action. All four of the remaining players are going to take home a pretty good payday. Fourth place going home with 65,000 and change all the way to the top spot of $230,582. I would like to win that. <laughs> no kidding. Two and a half years and running, the HPT has eclipsed the million dollar prize pool here in Black Hawk at the Golden Gates Casino. 230 grand, definitely a lot of cabbage. Here is the updated chip counts. 
Our overwhelming chip leader is Colin York with 12 and a half million. Both Ryan White and James Richards are riding the short stack, but you never know what could happen in No Limit Texas Hold'em. Girl, ain't that the truth. Blinds are 60, 120,000 with a 15,000 chip ante. So the blinds are sky high right now. That's why you noticed Ryan White, even though he has almost 1.5 million, just 12 big blinds in his stack. This is James Richard, also goes by JR. JR lives in Denver, but he's originally from Vietnam. Jack eight of spades, five big blinds. That's an all in hand, four handed. Over to Doug Milner, he looks down at junk and quickly throws it away. Now we're on to Ryan White in the nine seat. Ryan's a 41 year old corporate development manager. And this is Colin York, the chip leader from Las Vegas, a professional player making his first final table in his young career hoping to close out his first championship. Not really many hands at all that Colin could be thinking about folding with one big blind in. And with queen eight, he makes the call and he has James in really bad shape. Both players sharing the kicker with the eight. Colin, queen high right now is way ahead. Straight's coming. Straight, my, my straight or your straight? My straight's coming. I don't know, I'm not feeling it. Maybe if, if you're gonna win, it's probably flush. Okay. E either way. All right, so JR's life on the line here is the flop. The flop is seven, five, deuce, two clubs. That's no help to James. He's still needing that jack. Wrong flavor. A very interested rail waits for the turn card. The turn is the ace of clubs, definitely not the card James was looking for. In fact, that takes away his jack of clubs as an out. So now he's looking for one of two remaining jacks in the deck in order to double up. The three of diamonds on the river, not what James needed. So he is going to have to say goodbye to us in fourth place. He'll head to the cage to collect over $65,000. A great payday for a weekend of poker. Very nice plan, man. So, three-handed now, just a couple of eliminations away from our newest HPT champion. One of these three gentlemen, Maria, going home with over $230,000. Colin York's probably feeling pretty good about his chances to take down the top prize and become our next HPT champion, but Doug and Ryan both have something to say about that, I'm sure. Ryan looks down at ace-queen offsuit, and that is good enough to go all in. <clears throat> and now Colin, he has king nine. Ryan's got roughly 10 big blinds, so there's still a lot of hands that Colin should be folding here. King nine is a little bit on the borderline of that, but I feel like he does have to make this call. And that is what he's going to do. So back-to-back -back hands, we have an all-in situation. Colin trying to go two for two and get us to heads up right away. Right now he's behind, but he is live. So we're basically coin flipping here. And I feel like Doug's sitting there hoping that Colin does eliminate Ryan because that would be a great pay jump for him and it would mean that he'd get heads up. The flop is ace, 10, five with two hearts. That's exactly what he was looking for. So Colin's cards no longer live. He's gonna need a lot of luck to suck out here. Collins ran pretty well at this final table. And with the turn on the ace of clubs, Ryan is going to double up through Colin. And Colin can afford these chips, but I'm sure he's not happy about it. So just like that, over two and a half million going into Ryan's stack. He's still short, but now he's got some more room to breathe. More poker from the Golden Gates Casino and Poker Parlor when we come back to the HPT. Thanks for coming back to the HPT. We are three-handed from Black Hawk, Colorado, here at the Golden Gates Casino. Let's get right back to this final table. Colin York still has the chip lead with under 12 million. Don't count Doug or Ryan out just yet, though. They both have decent stacks to play with. Yeah, you can see Ryan's stack now has 25 big blinds. So he's on that verge of extreme shortness, but definitely has a threatening stack that can do some damage. Blinds are still at 60 and 120,000 with a 15,000 chip ante. Action starts on Ryan, this hand on the button with King Jack. Just under $93,000 will go to the next person that has to leave this final table. And he just shoves with 25 big blinds and I don't think I like that too much. It's a, it's a little bit too good to just jam 25 big 
And I think if I were him, I would have raised, called it off a lot, or, you know, even see a flop to really maximize some value. But Doug does wake up with eights, though, in the big blind, which is a calling hand here, and he does call. So Ryan's tournament life on the line again. But if he can find a king or a jack, he is going to launch up to over six million in chips. I'm not hot. Boy, we've seen this a lot on the HPT. The short stack gets a couple of double ups, and next thing you know, he's the chip leader. Here is the flop. The flop is three, nine, ten, couple of clubs. Ryan still hasn't improved, but he did pick up a couple more outs. He has a gut shot. A queen would give him a straight as well. A lot of live cards in the deck that can help Ryan. Here is the turn. And that is one of those cards that he was looking for. He has now turned pair of kings. So Doug is now behind, needing an eight on the river, or else Ryan will double through him. Let's see the river. The river is the three of hearts. So Maria, just like that, when we started four-handed play here, Ryan only had 12 big blinds in his stack, two quick double ups, he's over six million in chips, and a big contender for the championship. Blinds going up to 80K, 160K with the 20K ante. They're not getting any cheaper. Colin has shifted over a couple of seats. You notice that wrist guard on his hand. We like our players to be comfortable here. Colin's going to raise to 320,000 with 10 8. And now Doug, who has 20 big blinds after doubling up Ryan, doesn't have a lot of room to play post flop. He just calls the small blind with ace deuce. I don't know if I like that so much. I think I'd rather see him fold or just three bet shove with that hand. Doesn't play that well post, but Ryan in the big blind wakes up with pocket jack and moves all in. And now obviously Colin I think is just tanking for show because there's no way he's thinking of calling Ryan's almost 40 big blind stack with 10-8 here. But Doug has put himself in kind of a weird position because he kind of opened up the door for Ryan to squeeze there with not such a great hand, but he does make the correct lay down and Ryan will win the spot. Ryan catching cards at the right time in this tournament, shorthanded at the final table. It's, that's when you want to go on a heater. So this hand will start with Doug Milner. And Doug's bleeding chips here. He's down to 15 big blinds, looks down at ace five offsuit and he decides to come in for a raise. I think if I were Doug on the button here, I'd probably just ship in the 15 big blinds. It's a little too good to just raise fold, but you don't necessarily want to let your opponents in post flop. Colin on the decision now. You know, in day two, Colin was one of the short stacks starting out, and he was able to grind that stack all the way up to fourth in chips when this final table started. And now he's a dominant chip leader. Colin calls the queen jack suited. Definitely the kind of hand that has a lot of possibilities after the flop. The flop is ace, king, four with a couple of clubs. Is that one of the possibilities you were just talking about? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure flush draw, straight draw is pretty good flop for Colin there. But Doug is also flop top pair. I'm sure they're going to get all the chips in the middle. Doug has bet half a million in chips. Colin. Colin is going to check raise all in here with his monster draw and Doug is going to give him the action. So here we go, Maria. We have a straight draw and a flush draw versus top pair. Colin is hoping to find a club or a 10 to eliminate Doug Milner. Basically a flip with two cards to come. Doug's all in for his tournament life though. He's hoping to fade those out. Colin hoping to find a club or a 10 and get us to heads up poker. The turn is the king, no help. The turn is the king of diamonds. No so one street left for Don't Doug to fade. Or 10 here to and Doug he will first. double up. Let's see the river. The river is the king the and Doug king. will win this hand with kings full, full of Doug. aces. That was a huge up. draw that Colin missed there to get to heads up play. You have Ryan White in the nine seed who has just caught fire since we started four-handed play. Doug, who started as the dominant chip leader, suddenly the run good has left him and he's doubled up two players. 
With every pot awarded, we are that much closer to our newest HPT champion and awarding life-changing money. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the HPT at the Golden Gates Casino and Poker Parlor. Let's get back to the action. As you can see, the three remaining players have tightened up the gaps between their chip counts. Colin York still is the chip leader, though, with 8.6 million. You can see in the stack swing graphic there, Colin has bled a little over 3 million in chips. Ryan has scooped up over 4.5 million since we last checked in. And he has launched himself into second place in the chips. And blinds aren't getting any cheaper. They are now 100, 200,000 with a 30,000 chip ante. And Colin will be first to go in this hand. Again, he lives in Las Vegas, came to us on the HPT because he, like every other poker player in America, knows that the Golden Gates Casino and the HPT put on a great event. Colin just decides to limp in on the button here with King 7 suited. Doug is also going to limp in with 7 6 suited. So onto the big blind of Ryan White. He has queen five offsuit and he's going to check his option. So a rare limped family pot at a final table. And the flop is king, king four, two hearts. That gives both Doug and Colin a pretty good hand here. Doug has the flush draw. Colin has tripped kings. And Colin is gonna fast play this. He's gonna fire, makes it 350,000. And Doug with the flush draw is not going anywhere. And Doug just calls as we've seen before. He doesn't really get too aggressive with his draws. And this will be the end of the hand for Ryan. So Colin going to the turn way ahead with trip queens. But Doug does have a lot of outs. The turn delivers the queen of spades. And I think this is Colin's cue to bet a little bit on the bigger side. He knows that Doug has shown a willingness to pay for his draws. And he does want to make him pay as even three kings is still vulnerable to the flush. He makes it a little bit over half pot to go. Decision back to Doug. 875,000 is the bet, and that is going to be good enough to get Doug to fold his flush draw. So Colin now, after a shaky start to four-handed play here, is finally scooping a pot. It's important that when you lose your momentum like Colin did, that you still keep yourself very composed. And I think he's doing a fine job. He looks very well composed, and he hasn't gotten crazy after doubling up a couple of players. It's important to note, I think, that Colin isn't playing bad. He just... Stopped running good. And Colin limps in here from the small blind with 9-3 offsuit. And Doug is just going to check back with kings there. Very sneaky on Doug's part. Slow playing those. The flop is deuce four jack with a couple of diamonds. And Colin's just going to fire a little pro bet of a couple hundred thousand. And Doug's just going to smooth call here. I like it. I like it. There's not really much for Doug to be scared of. He also has the king of diamonds in his hand. The nine of spades falls on the turn. So Colin has now hit second pair, and now he has a reason to bet. No reason he should be putting Doug on pocket kings here. And Doug is just going to smooth call again. I'm really happy to see him do that. He has just set the hook and slowly reeling him in as the eight of hearts falls on the river. So Doug has the best hand. Unfortunately for Doug, Colin is going to slow down now. And if I were Doug, I would bet kind of on the smaller side. I think it's really hard to put Colin on a very big hand here. And he does just bet 700000 and Colin's going to quickly call and see that Doug's got a few tricks up his sleeve. <laughs> crafty, crafty with the pocket kings. He's going to scoop a little over $3 million in chips. I think he's clapping for Doug, too. I think he didn't expect that out of him. Three-handed poker waiting to get to heads up. The next elimination is going to go home with over $92,000. Huge money. After that, three numbers will be to the left of the comma as first and second, both going home with a six-figure prize. Ryan White is on the button and under the gun here. Ryan raises it to 400000 with ace four of diamonds. 400000 Colin folds a small blind. And now Doug Milner is going to call with a suited 
And the flop is 995, nine, two clubs. Doug has flopped a flush draw. Ryan has ace high. Doug checks. And I think these other players have figured out that Doug's not much for semi bluffing or even stole cold bluffing. If he's putting money in, he's got something. And after slow playing those pocket kings against Colin, I think it's going to be harder for these guys to put him on a hand. I feel like Doug could put Ryan in a really tough spot here with ace high if he would just raise, but no, Doug is just going to call. The turn is the three of hearts, so no help for Doug's flush draw. Ryan still ahead with just ace high, but he does pick up a gut shot straight draw for the wheel. I think Doug needs to try to make a play for the pot on this street. He can't always be giving people credit just when they see bet. Ryan is going to check back and not fire a second barrel. And the river is the four, and that actually pairs both Doug and Ryan, but Ryan's kicker is better. And now I feel like Doug might even be trying to go for a value bet here, but he's not going to get a fold out of Ryan, I don't think. Doug, what'd you do there, man? Doug fires 900,000. And I think you're right, Maria. I don't think Ryan's going to go anywhere. I think Doug, if he makes that play on the flop or the turn, we're already on to the next hand. I think the thing is, is Doug thinks he's betting for value, and Ryan just doesn't know if his four is any good here. Doug doesn't expect Ryan to have a better four in his hand. And that's why he might get Ryan to fold, because Doug looks kind of comfortable. Ryan is going to make the call, and he's going to find out he just made a very, very good call. And that's going to be just under 4.2 million going towards Ryan's chip stack. By Doug's reaction, he didn't think he was value betting. He didn't look too happy to flip that over, and I think he's regretting not being more aggressive. More poker from the Golden Gates Casino when we come back. Welcome back to the HPT. It is a mile high prize pool in the mile high state of Colorado here in Blackhawk at the Golden Gates Casino and Poker Parlor. Let's get back to this final table. Not too many huge swings in the chip counts. Colin is still in the chip lead position and Doug Milner, who has the shortest stack, isn't really all that short. Colin is starting to right his ship a little bit. He's gained a little over a million in chips since we last checked in. Ryan has lost a little over a million in chimps since we last checked in. Doug has been kind of staying about even, just 125,000 difference. Lions are continuing at 100, 200,000 with a 30,000 chip ante. Colin looks down at a huge hand three ways, tens. The next elimination going home with just under 93,000. Two eliminations away from awarding over 230,000. Colin has sevens on the button, and he min raises. Doug's going to call from the small line with 9-8 offsuit. And Ryan also decides to play. So Colin's raise didn't move anybody away. And there's a seven right in the window for Colin. He's flopped a set, but it looks like everybody else has a piece too. Doug's flopped an open-ended straight draw, and Ryan has top pair. This is going to get ugly. Chips are going to be flying. Doug and Ryan check. I think it could get uglier if Doug was the type to fast play draws, but he isn't. So I have a feeling Colin's going to see bet and he's going to get both players to call. 700 is the bet and I expect Doug to call. I certainly don't expect him to raise. And I think after Doug calls, it's not really a good spot for Ryan to be raising either. But he does go all in. He just doesn't want to let another card come off in case somebody has a draw. And I like how Colin didn't snap to a decision here. He's trying to keep Doug in the pot, but he is going to go all in, and that's good enough to get Doug to fold his open-ended draw. 
And look at this. I mean, Colin has Ryan absolutely crushed. Only 2% is Ryan's win percentage here. And I think Colin's just happy to see that Ryan doesn't have one of the two draws from the flop. Only a running full house. We'll keep Ryan with us today. Let's see a turn. The turn is the jack of spades, and now Ryan is drawing dead. An insignificant queen of clubs comes on the river, and that is going to do it for Ryan White. The 41-year-old corporate development manager from Leewood, Texas, will be going home with a huge payday worth just under $93,000. And just like that, my friend, we are heads up. Collins looking to close this one out as he's been our chip leader ever since shorthanded play started. Out of 713 players, Ryan White just took third. That is definitely an accomplishment to be proud of. Heads up, we'll begin at the 100-200 level with a 30,000 chip ante. We've shifted Doug over to the seven seat, moved Colin over to the three seat. And it looks like Doug will be first to go here. Heads up, he's going to limp in with queen eight. Colin will check his option with 10-4 offsuit. So an unraised pot here. The first hand heads up as we go to the flop. The flop is six, queen, four, a couple of diamonds. Of diamonds. Doug has hit top pair, Action. and Colin has bottom pair. But in heads up play, you don't really expect people to fold right away when they Doug flop a pair. Colin fires 300,000, and Doug quickly makes the call as the 10 of hearts ten falls of hearts. on the turn. So now Colin has two pair, and Doug has top pair. This could be a very short heads up match. Colin fires 800,000. And Doug calls again. You can't really blame Doug for thinking that he has the best hand. Oh, no. Eight of spades comes on the river. So Doug rivers a bigger two pair. And now Colin's obviously going to go for a value bet. And let's see if Doug is going to have it in him to raise him on the river or if he's going to just decide to call. I think this board isn't necessarily the best board for Doug to raise on the river, but he Doug. doesn't even really have to think about that because Colin now checks it to him. Doug bets two Doug million, which is almost million. pot, and I really like this because even though Doug may not know Colin has two pair, Colin Decision definitely to has Colin. to call here, I think, unless he just gives Doug the 7-5. I was kind of surprised to see Colin, Colin even check call. over to Doug Let's on the river. Got. I am, but, you know, the 8 Doug did fill the straight eight. draw from the flop, and he well, has seen Doug just continually call. So the first hand heads up. Both players end up with two pair, and nobody doubled up. <laughs> <laughs> More heads up action from the Golden Gates Casino and Poker Parlor here in Blackhawk when we come back. 713 players now is two as we are heads up mano a mano for over $230,000 and the HBT Championship. Let's get right to the table. And now Doug Milner has overtaken the chip lead. Him and Colin York, though, are very close in chips, so it's still anybody's game. Yeah, you can see by the blinds, 37 bigs to 35 bigs, virtually neck and neck. Blinds are going up as well. They're now 150,000, 300,000 with a 40,000 chip ante. Both of these guys guaranteed to go home with $142,857. The one who can outlast the other will go home with a lot more, $230,582. And they will also be our newest HPT champion. And when you win here in Colorado, it means a lot. The flop is queen, jack, jack, two spades. So Doug and Colin have both flopped trips here. The case jacks on the board. Doug has the better kicker. And Doug's going to check call here with his trip jacks. And the turn is the 10 of hearts. And now they don't know it, but they're chopping because both the queen and the 10 play with their three jacks. Colin firing 800,000. It's funny, one thinks they're betting for value, the other thinks they're trapping. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Doug we'll, we'll decides raise. now is the time to check raise to 2.1 million. And, and I think that should raise a lot of red flags for Colin. He's never yeah, seen Doug play. do this. And the board's not Let's that great, room. even for trip jacks. It just got a little worse. And Doug is going to move all in, and that's going to be good enough to get Colin to fold. 
If Colin had made the call, they would have chopped the pot. But for the first time at this final table, we've seen aggression come from Doug. And I think that's why Doug got Colin to fold basically the same hand there because that run out wasn't really great for Trip Jacks, like I said. And because Doug showed so much aggression that he hadn't shown before, he actually got Colin to fold a hand that chops with him. So with that last pot, I think Doug retook the chip lead. As these two gentlemen battle it out for the HPT Championship, let's take a break for A Poker Life featuring the legend himself, Mr. Doyle Brunson. Doyle tells us the stories of yesteryear, and this week he tells us about one of his favorite characters in the game. You might know him if you've read the books, Mr. Elmer Sharp. Elmer was a, uh, one of the tough guys in, in Fort Worth. Uh, with, I think that uh, they had some kind of a competition going about who was the toughest guy. They had fights all the time, and he ran an after-hours nightclub, and he had a, a pet bear that he kept on a, a leash at, at his place, uh, and he would wrestle that bear. They'd get him physically wrestle with him. and. Uh, it, it was an unusual thing. He had a poker game after hours that I went there quite often. And uh, it was kind of a gathering place for uh, the gamblers at Elmer Sharp's nightclub. I could listen to Doyle Brunson stories all day long. More poker from the Golden Gates Casino and Poker Parlor when we come back. 713 players all had the dream of sitting where these two gentlemen are right now. Over $230,000 going to one of these guys. Let's get right back to the table. Doug is gaining some traction in this heads up match now, pulling away from Colin by a little bit. Now Doug's got 12.7 million to Colin's 8.7 million. Colin down to just 22 big blinds as he's lost over one and a half million in chips since we last checked in. Blinds moving up, they are 200, 400,000 now with a 50,000 chip ante. Colin will be on the button, which will make him under the gun here as he looks down Action at 5-3 offsuit. Going to limp in. And Doug is going to check his option with 9-7 offsuit. The flop is 6-8-5 all spades. And Doug has flopped a straight with the gut shot straight flush draw. Colin just has a pair of fives here. Big, big hand for Doug here. Colin bets 500,000 and again, slow playing the big hands. Doug is just gonna smooth call. We'll see a turn. The turn is the five of clubs. That's a bit of an action card because now Colin's improved to trip and Colin feels pretty good about his hand since there's only three spades on the board, not four. Heads up, we have one player with trip fives, another player Colin with a straight. Three million. Doug yeah, Doug's going to go all in, and I don't see Colin getting away from this at all. I don't know, actually, because Doug has really just only shown aggression when he has it. Colin doesn't have anywhere near the nuts here, and this is why I think Doug should have just called again on the turn. Doug is not afraid of much except for just the dry spade draw. And, you know, the fact yeah, being that this you, is huh? Colin's tournament life that he's going to call off against Doug, who definitely isn't bluffing. It's very obvious Doug has a good hand. It's just a matter of whether or not Colin thinks his hand Maybe is better than Doug's. I think Colin might actually get away from this. The fact that he's even thinking about it shows that against an opponent like Doug, you really have to consider that you're beat here. Well, I'm giving Colin all kinds of props for being in the tank with this kind of a hand heads up. I've done a lot of HPT events over the last almost decade, and I can tell you, a lot of our players would have snap called by now. Nice hand. But Colin is going to fold his Colin, trip fives. Maria, that's some discipline right there. It's definitely a good lay down, but I think Doug makes it a little bit easy for his opponents to play against him because... He does have a very specific style when he has a hand versus when he doesn't. And I think that's kind of what helped Colin make that fold. I'm impressed. That's all I'm going to say. I think when Colin is going to watch this at home on his couch, he's going to think, yeah, I can play this game after all. I laid down a big monster heads up. We're going to ratchet the blinds up another notch. They're now 250,000, 500,000 with a 50,000 chip ante. Colin's got about 16 big blinds now, so he's definitely nearing the zone where he needs to be shoving all in. Doug decides to just limp in with ace-five. 
that's a bit deceiving. And I think if I were calling here and I see that, I might just jam with, it with King Jack. It's a little too good to have to raise fold. You could also raise and call it off as well. Colin is going to raise here. He's going to make it 1.4 million. 900,000 more. And Doug not wasting any time with his call. And I don't really understand this call from Doug. I think that he might not be aware of Colin's stack size relative to the blinds because I think it's pretty easy when you limp in with an ace there, heads up, that you're going to put your opponent all in with his 16 big blind stack. The flap is queen seven nine with a couple of diamonds. So nobody improves with the flop, but Colin picks up a few more outs. He's got a gut shot straight draw. Let's see a turn. Both players are going to check. The turn is the nine of hearts, and now Colin is going to semi bluff his this hand. It looks like, and I think Doug's just going to let it go. Doug doesn't really seem like the type to call with ace high, but you never know. Doug will make the call. Well. Doug proved me wrong. He is going to call this turn bet with ace high. Let's see what happens on the river, though. Let's see the river. Hope Colin's willing to fire another one. But Colin does oh, river the straight. Makes it a lot Colin easier for him in. to bet. And he's going to go all in. So Doug is most definitely not going to call it off with this run out with ace high. Unfortunately for Colin, Doug has absolutely nothing. Not really sure why Doug is Hollywooding here. He can't actually be thinking of calling with ace high. I think if he puts Colin on a busted flush draw, that might be what's giving him some pause. Let me have one. But I still don't think that this is a good run out. Sometimes Colin will bluff this river with a better hand than ace five. Well, I appreciate it. Doug is gonna fold well, and, and Colin is gonna scoop big a big pot, pot here. And we take the chip lead. The heads up battle Good continues board. here at the Golden Gates Casino and Poker Parlor. We are not far from our newest HPT champion. Come back right after this. Heads up poker is what separates the champion from the runner up. Who is it going to be? Colin York or Doug Milner? Let's get right back to the table. And Colin has retaken the chip lead, but not by much, as you could see. He's got 11 million to Doug's 10.4 million. It's really only a one big blind difference considering how big the blinds have got. Yeah, you can see right there in the graphic, Colin has 22 big blinds, Doug 21 big blinds, as the blinds are 250,000, 500,000 with a 50,000 chip ante. This is the first time since Daniel Negreanu designed our main event structure that we've gotten this deep into it. 713 players. Well over 20 million chips in play in this event. And Doug decides to limp in with Jack-10 and Colin raises with Ace-5. And it looks like Doug's happy to just limp call a raise here. So a big pot brewing as we go to the flop. And the flop is Ace-King-Deuce. Colin's got top pair. Doug's got a gut shot straight draw to Broadway. And Colin is going to fire. He, he makes it 1.2 million. So 1.2 million over to Doug. Doug takes a gander at his cards. And he is going to stage the calling chips and put them in the middle. So Doug, hoping to find a queen for Broadway. He made that call with just complete air. The turn is the three of clubs. Now Doug also has a backdoor flush draw. He's got the ten of clubs in his hand to go along with his straight draw. And Colin checks. Colin going to slow down after Doug making that big call on the flop. And Doug goes all in and Colin totally calls him. Doug's got his hand caught in the cookie jar a little bit, but he still does have a good number of outs. Excuse me, Doug shows Jack ten. Currently jack high. Doug needs to find a club yes. or a queen to stay alive at this final Looks table. Like if a brick comes here. on the river, we're looking at our newest it HPT champion. Catch up. We'll have a winner. We'll have to count it down. It's been a it long close. final table. It's been a long three but days Doug of poker to get to this point. Or a club. Otherwise, Colin will be our first place finisher. And we are at the penultimate of the championship. Let's see the river card. 
And the river, river is the queen of spades, and that is heartbreaking for and Colin Douglas as he Slade. sees the championship and just slip from Lewis his Hawk. fingers. He gives Doug a full double up, which is crippling Colin to just one big blind. This game just isn't fair sometimes. Colin doing everything right. The cards just disagreeing with his plans. And Maria, I've never been in this spot. I don't know if you have, but you got your man all in and you're one street away from closing the door and you get rivered. Can Colin bounce back from this? It would take nothing short of a miracle for Colin to pull this one out, but he really shouldn't feel bad if he were to go home with second place prize. It would be bittersweet, I think. The man has played a great poker game. Has proven to me, anyway, he's got the chops of a professional. And this last hand is just more salt on the wound as Colin's all in for his lone big blind with ace-seven, and Doug just has him dominated with ace-ten of diamonds. So now it's Colin hoping to get lucky to double up. He's going to need a few double cares, ups baby? to get back to where he just was. Like a quarter of a blind. It doesn't make any difference. Colin shows ace of clubs. One hand at a time, shall we? Right now, Colin needs to find a seven on this board to stay alive. Here comes the flop. It is deuce, ace, king. So both players pair the ace. Doug has him out kicked, and it has a huge lead in this hand. The turn is the nine, nine of hearts, and now Doug is just one card away from becoming Colin our newest HPT lot. champion here. Colin is looking for a seven to win, or he could chop this pot with a nine or a river. deuce on the river. Here uh -oh. comes the river. It is a brick, six. the six of diamonds, and that is going to do it. There is our newest HPT champion. His name is Doug Milner. And he is going to graciously shake the hand yeah. of Colin York, who also played an amazing game tonight. Just unfortunately, couldn't run good when he needed to. Maria, they always say in poker, you got to win the flips and get a little lucky. Well, you also have to avoid a little bad luck. Colin is now standing by with Dan O'Brien to get his thoughts on his second place finish tonight. Colin. It was an incredible battle from start to finish. He took out six of the seven players that were eliminated before. Heads up seemed to be a battle. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Yeah, um, I think I made quite a few mistakes, to be honest. I think um, I underestimated my opponent a little bit. He played pretty well. Uh, I think he held over me in all the key pots. Probably some bad folds, to Try to stay in the tournament. Uh, yeah, I mean, he did a great job. And it looked like the way you called there in the river, you seem to have decided that your opponent was very capable of making a bluff and you just were not going to fall top pair. I mean, that was kind of weird. I, I knew I had the best hand. I don't know how to explain it. I'd been playing with him for a while. I wasn't trying to make too many reads on him. He was playing pretty straightforward, but I, I knew that he was behind in that hand and there wasn't anything for me to think about, really. Well, it was a hell of a call and unfortunately, things didn't go for you well on the river there, but you played excellent and congratulations. And I know it's tough to hear, but Second place isn't too bad. You're gonna have 143,000 to make up for it. Thanks, Dan. Congratulations, bud. Thank you very much, Dan, filling in for James Larson in the sideline reporting gig, and congratulations again to Colin York. What an amazing run this young pro had, but the night belongs to Doug Milner. The elder statesman at this table played a very slow and calculating game, not as aggressive as he could have been in spots, but he's still the man taking down the top prize. He's on the floor with Dan right now, to hear what it's like to be our newest HPT champion. Thanks guys, we're here with the winner of our Heartland Poker Tour event here at the Golden Gates Casino and Poker Parlor in Blackhawk, Colorado. Doug, it seemed like you kind of hung around most of the final table until you got to heads up. Was that your strategy? We played together earlier and so I kind of knew a little bit about how I was gonna play. Uh, I figured he had a big, not just a chip advantage, but I figured he had a big advantage uh, in experience, heads up. I have not played a lot of heads up poker. I just was trying to stay out of the way. Fortunately, at the beginning of the, of the heads up, uh, I was getting some cards. Yeah, I saw you turned over that deuces full of queens there, and it looks like you had a few cards. I was not just to, when it's on TV, you'll see some of the hands I was getting. And I think it kind of put him a little out of sorts. He, uh, he just didn't know quite how to cope because the few times he called, he got beat. What made you shove that jack-10 hand? I really didn't think he would call. 
He hasn't called, he didn't call very many of my all-ins. I didn't call many of his, but I also felt that if he did call, I had a chance. Well, yeah, it was a grueling battle out there. It looked like you guys, you know, really went at each other all night long and uh, came down to, you know, you weren't really that far behind. So, heck of a shove, heck of a car on the river, and congratulations. Thank you again, Dan O'Brien, and congratulations again to Doug Milner. Maria, we saw just about everything you can see at a poker table at this final table. What was your take in the final stages as we worked our way to a champion? Well, you know, Colin caught a string of hands that just propelled him into that chip lead, and for a while it looked like he was going to run away with it, but Doug Milner caught his fire just in the nick of time, and he ended up knocking Colin out. It's all about timing, isn't it, my friends? Catching the cards at the right time, definitely a key to success. Now, do you think you have what it takes to sit down under the worldwide television cameras of the HPT? Well, then log on to hptpoker.com and find an event near you. There's plenty of them to choose from. For Maria Ho and guest sideline reporter Dan O'Brien, I'm Fred Bevel. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time right here on the HPT.